Hello, everybody, and welcome to ah! Real Stories, episode 49. Wow, we are almost at episode 50. What a fun run this has been. And let's keep going to 100 and see where we're at there. But yeah, let's let's get into some spooky stories today. I have three ghost stories for you guys today. So let's get started. I'm from a small town in Iowa, around 7,000 people. When you grow up in a small town, you become really resourceful at finding things to do for fun. Urban legends are plentiful and always fun to hear. I also don't live far from our capital city. As I got older, I started venturing into the city and I made a lot of friends. They loved hearing stories of growing up in such a small town and found things we did for fun wild. They would beg me to take them to the cemetery that is about 40 minutes from my house. It's a place I had been to only a handful of times. I will admit, during the daytime, it's very innocent. I know the area somewhat well as I've hunted out there and been on a few late night drives. But when nighttime comes, it becomes very creepy. I will state this now, I am not into the supernatural. If something creepy happens to me, I look for a logical explanation. If you tell me a haunting story, I'll roll my eyes. But there is no explanation for this. So one evening, some friends from the city call and they want me to take them out to the cemetery. I agree, so they make it down to me around 8 p.m. This is in mid-fall, so it's somewhat dark out by this time. We stand around having a few smokes and catching up with one another. There are five of us. Around 9 p.m., we leave. Part of the trip is on a paved highway, but the rest is on limestone gravel roads, about six, maybe 10 miles at most to the graveyard. We took my friend's new car at the time, it was a couple months old, and it was a reddish maroon Pontiac G6. If you have ever drove on a limestone gravel road, your car gets covered in a fine white dust. But we made it to the cemetery. The entrance is a large cast iron gate. We go in, and I show them headstones. One was very large from the early 20th century, and it has a very creepy saying on it. Something like, Where you are now, I once was, and soon you'll be where I am. I found out it's a pretty common saying on old headstones. My friends are in agreement that it's really creepy though. They ask if anything else has ever happened to me out here. No, not really. My car once overheated driving by, but that's about it. Now this gravestone sits in the last row facing west. And to the south, maybe about 50 yards away, are a whole row of children's graves with small gravestones just big enough to fit each name on them. Well, urban legend says if you run in between those gravestones zigzagging, you'll die. My friend starts talking trash, telling me that's the dumbest thing he's ever heard of. He yells he's not afraid of any stupid dead babies. I said, I don't know, man. I always heard about that, and I heard that somebody did it and they were dead a week later. He tells me I'm an idiot. He starts running through them. He gets about halfway. He could care less about the supposed curse, but he doesn't complete the whole run and comes walking back. We joked with him and asked him if he's too scared to do it. He said yes. I got creeped out about halfway through. We went back to the entrance and had a few smokes and shot the breeze for a little while. I was ready to leave. I hadn't had dinner and I was hungry. It's around 11 p.m. at this point and we head back to the town that I live in. On the south side of the town, there is a McDonald's. When we headed inside the McDonald's, we left our car under a street light, so it was very well lit and a friend noticed that there were small handprints all over the car. No fewer than 20, but not all were the same size, but all were very small. They were on top of the trunk and on top of the roof as well. You can see them because they were outlined in the dust from the gravel road. I remember looking really close and you could even see fingerprints in the white dust. There is no explanation for this. If they were there before we went out, they would have been covered by the dust. We couldn't figure out how a kid would have gotten on top of the car. There's no kids around where the owner of the car lived. We tried to come up with any reason that they would have been there, but nothing made sense. I told my friend that ran through the graves, he better watch out. To this day, if you bring it up to him, he won't hear a word of it. He'll leave the room or get angry that you even brought it up. And we are close to 20 years since this happened.
Oh, man. Well, if you needed another reason to not run in between the graves of small children, there you have it. My goodness, what a crazy story. So our author is taking their friends to an old cemetery because their friends are really interested in the cemetery. And I'm not going to lie, cemeteries are interesting, but they're very spooky. And I don't understand people who hang out there recreationally. It just gives off, you know, obviously very sad and depressing vibes. Like, people are dead. It's not, you know, a happy occasion. There's people, like, visiting their loved ones, and, you know, ghosts are associated with graveyards. However, at this point, when our author takes their friends there, they're driving on a lime road. And if you've driven on a lime road, like the author mentions, it covers your car in, like, a white dust. Now, this will come up later in the story. So after looking at a couple headstones, our author notices that there's a bunch of child graves, which is really upsetting because they're all small and they just have the kids' names on them. And they mentioned to their friend, urban legend says if you run between those gravestones zigzagging, you'll die. Now their friend is a skeptic and they're a skeptic of everything supernatural, so they decide to go do it. However, he stops about halfway through and says that he got creeped out. Now, at this point, they're kind of hungry and it's late, so they leave to go get food. So they pull into a McDonald's, and when they get out of the car, they're parked under a streetlight. And with that powdery limestone substance on the car, they can see that there are small handprints on the car. Yes, small, childlike handprints all over the car they said no less than 20 that's so scary dude like these child ghosts casper and all his little homies are just clearly making their presence known as in like yo don't run through our graves you weirdo as if you needed to be told that (laughs) like here's another thing to hopefully keep in your mind that'll make you never do that again finding small handprints all over your car. And they said that they were so clear that they could low-key see fingerprints. So this was not, you know, a small animal or anything else. And our author mentions at the beginning of the story that they're a skeptic of everything paranormal and supernatural. So this was really a wake-up moment for them as well. Like, how many experiences do people have to hear before they believe themselves. Because even if, you know, 60, 70%, I'll give you, of stories out there, not the ones on this podcast, I only read real stories, <laughs> but 60 to 70% of people's ghost stories are, you know, there's fabrication or, you know, logical reasonings to explain, even if it's 60 to 70% are not true and explained away. That's still 30 to 40% of people who are having legitimate ghost experiences. So we cannot just discount everybody. Not everybody is just lying for no reason. And it's not like it's very, you know, profitable to lie. Even on Reddit, where I find these stories, the author, other than gaining like minor accolades from other Reddit users, they don't gain anything financially. There's no incentive to lie, is the point. So hopefully this story made them a believer, because if they don't believe now, I don't know what would convince them. We'll be right back with more creepy stories after this word from today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Hey guys, Mental Health Awareness Month may be over, but that doesn't make the problem less important. So if you're feeling stressed, depressed, anxious, or overwhelmed, you're not alone. And today's sponsor, BetterHelp, is here to help you. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help you. You can talk to your therapist in an online environment at your convenience. There is a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's network of 20,000 therapists that give you access to help that may not be available in your area. You just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you can get matched with your own therapist in as little as 48 hours. 
You can then schedule video and phone sessions, plus you can exchange unlimited messages with your therapist. You can also request a new therapist at any time for no additional charge. So join the 3 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash real stories. That's better H E L P dot com slash real stories. All one word. There's no time like the present to take care of your mental health. So do it today with better help. This happened moments ago, and I'm genuinely scared. I only ask for guidance. My home is old, built during the time of slaves by a family member. He sadly did own slaves. In fact, he was known for being violent towards them. But I thought this was all behind us now. When my dog, a lab and pit bull mix, stood in front of me and started to growl and bare her teeth, it scared me, as she is a sweet dog who doesn't bark, much less show her teeth. I tried to get out of my room, but she began to circle me, not breaking her line of sight with whatever it is that she saw. So I was stuck, until I heard my door slam and she began to whimper, and tried to get me to pick her up. I climbed out of my window into the garden, and we've been watching the windows as I type this. She is shaking like hell, and I'm not sure what to do. This isn't the first time this has happened, but this time, I couldn't ignore it. It's my first time seeking help for this, and I'm afraid maybe next time Lola won't be here to protect me. Update. Things have calmed down. I have felt like it's eyes on me all day today as I've cleaned, but it hasn't acted up yet. I've taken advice that I was given, but when I shouted prayers, it began to slam doors and windows open and close until I had stopped. If I can bring myself to do it, I will keep you updated on this, but I'm not sure. Wow, what an interesting story. It sounds like the ghosts of maybe some past slaves who were at this house are taking their revenge on the new owner. And I stand with the ghosts on this one because our author, their family owned this house and they owned slaves and were known to be violent towards them. So if now you have to deal with the repercussions of a haunted house because of that, I usually try to be sympathetic, but in this case, I totally understand where the ghosts are coming from. Maybe move out of the house. That would probably be my advice. If your house has such a terrible past that you're aware of. So it's not like this should really be surprising. You know that, you know, terrible things have gone on at this house. Why are you still living in your family member's old racist slave house? Like, this is crazy. You kind of deserve it for picking such a weird place to live. Oh, goodness. I just feel like the house is is cooked at this point. There's too many bad things that have happened there. It's like when, you know, they tear down serial killers' old houses. They did that in Cleveland with Anthony Sowell. After so many bad things happened there, the house is just chalked at that point. There's nothing you can do. There's too much bad juju, negative vibes, and terrible memories associated with this property so you just got to go at that point like you know what the history is this should not be a surprise and there's not much that your dog is going to be able to do about this unfortunately because you know dogs can see it and a lot of the times they'll bark at ghosts but you know there's not much they can do it's not like your uh, dog is going to attack a ghost that's not really how it works i do sympathize with them a little bit because they have a lab and a pit bull mix and that's a cute dog but that's the only sympathy they get other than that you know get rid of the house sell it burn it do whatever but it's it's not worth it because like there's been too many bad things that have happened there to where you think you can just live there nah i'm sorry the author says that they thought this was all behind us now like what no like the, the negative vibes associated with this house do not just you know stop it's not like ghosts can hold grudges and in some case 
they're justified in doing so. And this would be one of those cases. So no, I don't think that, you know, the ghosts are just going to be like, oh yeah, you know, what happened to us when we were alive was okay. So we're just going to rest peacefully now. It's like, no, especially because you're a descendant of somebody who did terrible things to them. Of course, they're going to have a vendetta against you. So uh, I appreciate the story, but yeah, get out of that house. Let me start this off by saying paranormal is normal for my family. So ghosts, spirits, whatever you want to call them, have never been a taboo subject for us. Growing up, you see something, you tell someone, and everyone listens and gives advice. I grew up never being afraid of the paranormal and was taught to be respectful. My whole life, I have experienced paranormal activity, so it happens and I move on until my senior year of high school. Again, I was taught to respect the dead, so I've never gone ghost hunting or tried messing with spirits or anything of the sort. If you do, that's fine. I was just taught not to, so to each their own. Senior year, I was given an assignment to find ancestors in my town and see how far back you can go with your relatives. My grandmother told me that... My grandmother told me and my cousin, a junior at the time, about an old cemetery that she believed a cousin was buried in and how to get there. So we go and find her grave and get the information. We thanked her for allowing us to get her tombstone information and to rest in peace. The whole time we were there, my cousin and I felt very off like we were being watched, and not in a good way. And yes, there is a good way. We go home, and everything is fine, until I go to bed and have the same feeling. I am laying in bed, staring at my door to the hallway, and feeling as if someone is out there watching me. This continues for months. I thought I was the only one who noticed it, until my brother, who was 10 at the time, started asking me if he can sleep in my room with me because he is scared of the hallway. He told me he felt like someone was watching him from the hallway and it felt bad. I agreed. It was not a pleasant energy like what a family member or maybe just a passing spirit feels like. This was a dark, eerie feeling. I told him that was fine and we both laid in my bed and stared at the hallway and felt eyes on us. We both said the Lord's Prayer and went to bed. We are not a super religious family, but me and my brother felt at that moment we needed to say the prayer. I graduated high school and things calmed down and the feeling seemed to go away until one morning. My mom went to work and my brother went to school. I got up and got in the shower and I was washing my hair when I felt a heavy feeling crash down on me like I was being watched. I turned my head to look to the side and there on the other side of the distorted glass shower door was a tall, dark figure. I could see head and shoulders but no other features except the red eyes. I screamed and threw open the shower door, and it was gone. I quickly got dressed and wrapped my shampooed hair in a towel and left the house, going straight for my grandmother's, and I told her, bawling, what happened. She looked as scared as I did. My grandmother believes it was a shadow person. Me and my mother had been fighting a lot, as well as having full-blown screaming matches, which we never did before the trip to the cemetery. Grandma called my mom, and they called someone to cleanse our house. I never went back, and I moved out. My mom sold the house, and I still get horrible feelings when I drive by it. That is my worst paranormal experience, but I have years of stories. I am currently 29, so there's a lot. If anyone wants more, I can post more, but honestly, be careful where you go and what you bring home. I have no idea who or what it was, but I am terrified of that house now, and it almost took a year before I stopped having panic attacks in the shower. I have told only family and a couple of friends about this experience, but was told that this Reddit page would be the perfect place for it. Oh boy, that is very, very, very scary. I like that in this person's house though, they had a good relationship with the paranormal up until this point. Like their family was very normalized to the idea of ghosts and they were taught to respect them and if they saw something they would tell everybody and people would listen and give advice that is how i wish everybody would view the paranormal with like a more open mind 
and just less of a skeptic because it's no fun when you're just like, nope, not, not real. There's no way that that could have happened and you're lying. Like, that's not a good way to go throughout life. Uh, you got to be more open to people's experiences because we're all just trying to get by. And some of us just have some crazy experiences. But in this story, our author, who, like I said, has a good relationship with the idea of the supernatural, is given an assignment in high school to find out about ancestors in their town. So their grandmother tells them to go to a cemetery and that they have a cousin there. So they go and they find their grave and they get the information. They thank them for allowing them to visit the tombstone and tell their cousin to continue resting in peace. Very well done. Very respectful. The whole time they were there, it felt like they were being watched though. So they were already kind of out to a bad start through no fault of their own. They handled the whole thing very respectfully. It just sounds like something had other plans. So this spirit or entity or force, whatever it was, followed them home. And it seemed to have stayed in their hallway, in their house. Because whenever they looked into the hallway, they felt like they were being watched. And it wasn't just our author. They also had a younger sibling, a younger brother, who also complained of this feeling of being watched and even wanted to sleep in the same room as his sister just to avoid the fear of being alone. So this was clearly something that was not just affecting our author, but somebody else, which to me just goes to clarify the story. Because if there's more than one person experiencing it, that feels like even more legitimate than if it's just one person, which can still be super legit, it just is better to have multiple people. It's like having witnesses to a crime. Better to have more. In some cases, because sometimes witness testimony can be unreliable. But this is a paranormal episode. So back to this. So at one point, things calm down and they're taking a shower. But when they're taking a shower, they get a heavy feeling that they're being watched. And they turn their head and they see a shadow figure, all black, with red eyes, tall, horrifying. Because this sounds like almost like a paralysis, a sleep paralysis demon, but in real life. Like you're not asleep, you're not almost asleep. She is fully awake in the shower of all places and this creepy demon comes to freak her out. It's the red eyes for me that really scares me. I don't like that, that seems evil. <laughs> so they get out of there, you know, and luckily it's gone when they open the door and they run out and they run to their grandmother's house because their grandma, because they have this family relationship to the paranormal, is open to talking about this stuff. And ever since she got back from visiting the cemetery, her and her mom were having a lot of arguments and screaming matches. And her grandma believes that the fighting kind of influenced that and maybe brought the shadow person along and maybe made them stronger. And what we can take away from that is that a lot of the times these spirits will thrive on negative energy and fear. Whenever there's a scary movie, which, you know, granted, you got to take that with a grain of salt. It's a scary movie. But they'll say to not feed into it. If you act scared, it makes it worse, which is always easier said than done. Nobody ever said it was easy to not act scared, but... It is something to do that helps because if they see the fear, they feed off of that and they, it almost makes them stronger. So that's probably what allowed this demon to kind of manifest itself while she's taking her shower. The brother's scared. She was kind of scared, although she said things had calmed down, but her and her mother had been fighting a lot. So there's a lot of negative energy and paranoia in the house. So a very crazy story, but they ended up not ever going back to their house and their mom sold the house. And to this day, they're still like uncomfortable even when driving by it. So not exactly sure what it was or whom that spirit can be attributed to, but it was definitely something malicious. And luckily it was only a demon that stayed at the house. It wasn't one where it's like, it's not the house that's haunted, it's your son. Like Insidious, this was more of like some, this followed you home and it's now staying at your house. 
which is not good, but at least they made it out. And, you know, if they have the opportunity to get rid of the house, then I don't blame them. If there was something, you know, super negative going on in my apartment, I'd probably get out of here too. So can't blame them. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for listening to episode 49 of Real Stories. This week, you have heard Cemetery Leaves Gift by Odd underscore Part 8074. Then, My Dog Saw Something and I Don't Know What to Do by Objective Price 978. And finally, I've always had a healthy amount of respect for the paranormal but this is the reason I now know to fear it by no level 5273. All stories were read with the permission of their respective authors. And if you have a story that you'd like to hear on the show, please email it to me at the ARS podcast at gmail.com. That's T H E A R S podcast at gmail.com. And you can remain anonymous. If you enjoyed it, tell a friend because it helps. And I will see you next week with a brand new episode. Until then, have a great rest of your week and stay safe.